When I use my forward facing sonar in across the country, there are four baits that I go to to catch fish and, and it really doesn't matter where, whether it's the St. Lawrence River all the way out to Lake Fork, anywhere in between, I'm using four baits. The first one, it's a classic one that everyone talks about, it's the minnow, it's the jig head minnow, okay? Um, this, it doesn't look like much, but this has caught more fish in the last two years and won more money than almost all the other baits combined. Um, the reason is it's a phenomenal imitator of a uh, struggling bait fish in the water. And with the introduction of forward facing sonar, you can make super accurate casts with this and you know, m work this above the fish's head because they're feeding up when it comes to you know, eating bait, especially largemouth, smallmouth too. Um, they're feeding up and they want this bait presented in a dying fashion above their head. So this is a staple and you have to learn how to become good with it. The Domeki rig, that's what, it, you know, Domeki rig, minnow bait, however you want to call it, and it, you know, it's, it's a staple. The way I use this, I start, or the way I rig this and, and what I use, this is a scented jerk, jerk shad from Z-Man. Um, I also use the spunk shad, with, you know, the, the combination between hog farmer and missile baits. Uh, I use the spunk shad, scented jerk shad, and uh, everyone knows the sakamata shad. They're a lot harder to get, but all minnow style baits. I li really, really have grad, you know, gradually moved to to the queen tackle jig head. It's the tungsten shows up really well on your on your forward facing sonar. It's got a good hook in it, and very important, it the hook or the line tie is perfectly vertical. That's what you really want to look for in a, you know, minnow style jig head is that line tie needs to be perfectly horizontal. If you can see my line in the water, this bait is going to rest perfectly at a 90 degree angle. And that gives you a lot more control, whether, you know, when you're looking at your forward facing and you see a fish coming, you can maneuver the bait a lot better and work it in a way that will make them bite. Um, as far as line goes and rod, I use a 744 XF from Douglas. It's the X matrix lineup. Um, it's a 74. I want to be able to cast really far with this if I need to. Um, it's got a, sort of a, a, a softer tip and you know, it's parabolic all, almost down to the last eye on the rod. Um, but my go-to is 12 pound sunline braid. Um, sometimes I do 15 and then I e either use 10 pound fluoro or 12 pound fluoro for my, for my leader. Um, you know, I, I, it's, it's pretty simple. It's, it's nothing too crazy. Um, I like my leader length to be about five or six foot. I don't want, no matter what knot I'm tying, I don't want my fluoro to braid knot to be in my reel. I want it, when I reel this all the way up, like I'm going to make a cast, I want that knot to be between the last eye and the reel, just in case you fire out and it gets caught in the, in the reel. So that's, that's one key you know, tip that I like to tell people. But this is the, uh, this is the minnow bait, you know, your, your Domeki rig, and that's a huge deal on live scope. Hopefully I can put that to work for you here in a minute. The second you know, bait fish style um, lure that I'm using is a jerk bait. Everyone knows a jerk bait. Um, specifically a hard jerk bait because you know that the the Domeki rig sort of is similar to a soft jerk bait so the reason I use a hard jerk bait is sometimes they want it moving faster and you can recognize that on your, your um, forward-facing sonar and on your screen you can recognize how the fish are reacting if they're kind of hesitant to really commit to a um, you know a Domeki rig when you're shaking it subtly over their head try firing out a jerk bait super erratic fast uh, movement above them can sometimes get more of a reaction strike. This is the mixed stick. Um, I always start out with this jerk bait. It's a, got great hook stock. Um, it's got a really great action. You can move it in a lot of different ways. I can make it go deep if I'm really reeling it fast, or I can make it, you know, stay somewhat on the surface. Um, so, you know, with with forward facing sonar, a lot of people's success comes from subtle. Uh, subtle changes in cadence because you're able to see how that fish is reacting to your bait live time. So you make a small change on your next cast and you realize maybe that fish isn't committing, you know, a jerk bait and a Domeki really have the capability to, to, you know, you have the capability to customize the, the movement of that bait. So 
you know, this, this jerk bait, any jerk bait really, I'm throwing on a Douglas X Matrix um, 684F. That's a six foot eight, uh, four power fast. So I think it's the best rod. I mean, I'll get it, you know, I sort of get into all that in my jerk bait seminar, but um, you know, that's, these are the two sort of minnow style baits I'm using on forward facing. Hopefully I can put that one to use for you as well. Now, I am, I don't normally do a lot of hanging a minnow and throwing a jerk bait out for suspended fish. My success so far in my career, it hasn't been that long uh, being on the Elite Series, but I have found a lot of success in the Opens and on the Elites, not targeting those bait eaters that are pelagic, that are suspended out deep. I really tend to grad, gr you know, gravitate towards your five to 20 foot of water with you know standing timber, bushes, brush piles, rock piles. The traditional stuff that people look for on side imaging. I use my hummingbird, you know, apexes and, and my um, 360 a lot when I'm using my forward facing sonar and that's where I'm comfortable. I want to be able to find targets on my 360 and then make an accurate cast with my forward facing sonar, you know, and present the bait to that fish that's on that piece of structure, rock, timber, brush, whatever it is. The best way I've found to do that is with two baits. The first one is that little rubber jig from Greenfish. Um, this jig's a staple. It, it's just, it's got such great action with that, with that um, rubber skirt. Um, and you know, I, the reason I use a three quarter ounce is it gives me a lot more control of that bait, whether it be dragging it in deep water, it maintains that bottom contact, or whether it be falling in front of a, um, a brush pile and getting that reaction strike because it's falling a lot quicker. Um, and you know, I can control the fall rate. I mostly have a Chunky D on the back from Missile Baits. Um, the Chunky D is an excellent trailer. It's, it's got the perfect length because that hook's a little bit longer. So it's got a perfect length. So it's got great kicking action. It stays outside of the skirt. So the skirt's long, but it doesn't quite cover the skirt. So it, it, get, it gets full action and the skirt doesn't really get in its way. Um, but, you know, again, keep it super simple. Throw this on a 7.4, 5 power X Matrix from Douglas. Um, you know, I feel like I can be really accurate with it while still being able to maybe go skip docks if I need to um, on a whim. Like I'm kind of moving all over when I'm doing this. So I want to be able to, you know, get up in five and six foot and, and skip a dock, but also pan out on my forward facing and see a brush pile and be able to, you know, cast at it too. So um, I'm throwing 20 pound sunline. That's, that's what I throw on a jig. I, I love that line. I mean, it's supple, it's the sniper. Um, I sometimes will throw shooter, but both of them are great. Um, the sniper, I just really like the cast ability um, and the abrasion resistance, but that's sort of my jig setup. And you know, it's, this stays on the, stays on my deck, whether I'm using forward facing sonar or not, but it's proven to be a really good forward facing sonar bait because I'm able to really customize how I work this, whether it's swimming or dragging or whatever it is. Um, so that's a really great one. Um, the next one that is really the reason I made the elite series in 2023 last year, um, the jig was a big factor. I won Ozarks on the jig, but this bait here kind of was my filler bait. I got all my fish, um, on this bait and everyone knows, uh, uh, you know, a robo worm drop shot style, uh, bait. That's something that people use a lot, but not a lot of people are, are throwing it on super heavy line and a heavy rod. So the 745, the same rod I'm using to throw the jig with 20 pound sun line, straight fluoro that's a power shot and it's a bad dude, right? Like when you're live scoping in thick structure, um, this, this bait really doesn't miss. They love a worm. It's traditional. Like they, they just eat a worm. And, and this worm in particular is the magic worm from missile baits. This is a PB and J. This is this color. If you were going to go out and buy one color, it would be PB and J all across the country. It works. Um, and the hook that I use is really important and it's why I choose the magic worm from missile. Um, the magic worm is a little bit thicker and I throw a three-aught uh, cover shot, heavy duty hook. 
So it's a, it's a cover, a lot of people are familiar with the cover shot, but I think the HD hook matters a lot. So the HD is just a little bit thicker and that allows me to really set the hook on this setup, like similar to a jig, like you, you really wanna give them, you know, a good hook set because you know, you can pull them out of the cover better and your hook to land ratio is better. And that cover shot, it seems kind of small, but when they get it, this worm, they get it. And you want that hook, you know, not to be too big to get rid of the action. Um, so yeah, and then, you know, the weight I use and the leader length, um, it really just depends. If I'm fishing, um, you know, maybe shallower and I don't want to be spook them as much, I can drop down to a quarter or three eighths. I feel like that's, you know, a quarter or three eighths weight is, is uh, a good weight when you get kind of shallower like this situation. Um, and then, you know, when I'm fishing deeper brush, rock piles, standing timber, I throw, a, you know, three eighths to a half. I don't really go above a half. Um, you know, I, I still want to, I don't want that weight to like get in those rocks or get get hung up. So I think a half is a really good uh, weight. Um, you know, I'll throw a three quarter, but the thing is, is you don't have much drag in the water when you're throwing this worm. So that half ounce falls pretty quickly. So you're, it's not like you're losing the reaction bite potential. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, this leader is a little longer. Sometimes I'll shorten it if the fish don't want it, if the largemouth are kind of hugging. We talk about a lot of different stuff in, it, uh, in the uh, basics you know, that, and, and getting going fishing. It's fun to talk about the rods and, and reels you know, and, 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 and uh, 